Hi everyone, today we're going to talk to you about sex trafficking as a cybercrime. This is Brent Skaggs. And this is Shane Kimball. Okay, so the first group we're going to talk about it are victims. And so the first statistic you see there are is the number of sexually victimized youth. And then if we drill down further, the number of sexually trafficked victims of those victims, 70% of them are under 24 years of age. And if we look even closer at the data, we find that of juvenile sex trafficking victims, 94% of them are girls. And if we look at young adult victims of sex trafficking, 98% of them are women. So while there isn't an exact statistic, there are estimations and guesses. and But we do see that the overall populations and genders and groups and types of people that sex traffickers go after. So online sex traffickers use a variety of techniques and use various forms of technology in order to lure victims uh, to engage in sex trafficking and to engage in child pornography. So sex traffickers utilize a couple different ways to lure victims. So they might utilize social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, that sort of thing. Uh, they might also utilize ch chat rooms, and these 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 techniques are primarily established to to set up a connection with the with the victim. Uh, sex traffickers and buyers or clients also use the internet and technology to engage in sexual tourism, which are as our book talks about is the our textbook in the class talks about specifically buyers using travel in order to explicitly engage in sexual activity with victims and the internet and technology in general has also allowed for the spread of child pornography and so sex traffickers and buyers engage in trading child pornography and manufacturing child pornography all right, so a lot of this will occur through the dark web or through encrypted communication or through phone calls. And anonymity and safety are key in these transactions. And um, so these transactions will primarily be exchanged through Bitcoin or illegal currency or cryptocurrency. And um, this way they can obtain a larger pool of clients and also communicate between buyers and post reviews to the traffickers and the victims. They can review the victim and the service at the same time. And they'll often chat about these in chat rooms and blogs. And again, with the deep web, a lot of these communications cannot be exactly traced very easily. And a lot of the onion links tend to move around a lot. So it's quite a challenge. And the internet in general has allowed for a larger pool of potential victims. So a trafficker can be anywhere in the world and reach out to a potential victim via a chat room and travel to that victim or have the victim travel to them relatively easily. And the same, the same goes for buyers. A, a potential buyer or John or client could find a advertisement and from any, anywhere in the world and potentially travel to that, that person. So the quote here is referring to essentially the fact that the, the process of sex trafficking has been modified, but the crime itself is the same. But sex traffickers are able, as we were just talking about, sex traffickers are able to utilize technology in order to expand their reach. And this quote comes from a law enforcement investigator. And so the process of luring the victim uh, loosely looks something like the, the bullets outlined here. So the first step is often going to be to gain the victim's trust. A sex trafficker would do that by establishing first and foremost a line of communication with the victim via chat room, social media. And then from there they might steer the direction in toward a slightly sexual or overtly sexual topic directing the potential victim towards a URL that might be inappropriate for them or something like to that effect. And then finally they're going, or not finally, and, but then next they're going to try to establish dependency with the victim. So they're going to try to alienate the victim 
from their family and friends, from their support group and their support network in order to make the victim feel a sense of dependence on the sex trafficker. Oftentimes they'll do this with favors, gifts, or food. The offerings of those sorts of things are usually targeted towards younger victims, teenagers, preteens, that sort of thing. And then for older potential victims, such as young adults and teenagers that might be looking for a job or a change of scenery, they might offer them a job as a server at a restaurant or a, jo a modeling job or something, something to that effect. All right, and so it begins to get darker and darker, and we begin to look at this and see some of the same kind of lineup as with child pornography and child molestation and exploitation. So um, they'll begin to maybe exchange favors for sexual acts, but on top of that, they'll begin to establish certain controls over the victim and dominance. And so first one is physical force. They'll often beat the victim make them feel helpless. Um, often it can be sexual abuse and just breaking bones even. And they can um, threaten the victim's family and since this is a form, often a form of organized crime, this threat can be legitimate. And finally, um, economic bondage will refer to the um, trafficker's ability to make the victim with a victim without an identity. So they can remove all their documents once they travel out of the country. And therefore, the victim will not have an identity to go with them outside the country. So they'll just be a victim. And these victims will often be exchanged to different buyers. And so, as Shane mentioned, the, the final step in this process for sex trafficking specifically is to establish that connection with the, with the clients or the buyers. And so the technology used for sex trafficking, um, traffickers use it primarily for, to set up adult classified ads. They use it to access social media and access potential victims in that way. Uh, they use it to interact and post ads on niche websites, and they also utilize more main, mundane forms of technology, such as cell phones and email. All right, and so the cell phones are typically your prepaid phones. Um, they are only traceable in the sense that you can get the buyer's original location of that phone through the area code. And a lot of these services are both deep web and surface web. So Craigslist and Backpage are really popular and we'll get to that in a second, but um, the other forms um, often have to do with communication and setting up the service. So Backpage has become the dominant commercial adult services ad provider. Craigslist used to be used to provide adult service ads as well, but they removed those in 2010. And as you can see, Backpage has profited from that handsomely. So a majority of their income comes from adult ads. And in 2014, there was a content analysis done by Teresa Hayden here at the University of Louisville. And she and her team found that on average, there were 53 adult ads per day and that, that the usage of those ad services peaked during events such as Derby. And there have also been investigations into Backpage's operations to figure out how they post these ads. And so what has been found is that the employees regularly edit the ads before they are posted. So they do that by removing explicitly illegal words and images that would directly relate to prostitution and then rather than reporting those po those potential posts or not posting them, they post the edited ad. And then the employees of Backpage have also been found to remove the metadata from these potential sex trafficking photos. All right, and um, this is kind of um, controversial and it receives a lot of attention from the anti-trafficking campaigns. Um, this is ultimately an issue of privacy in this bullet point. So... If you look at it from the view of a common person trying to sell something else, um, you would want a lot of that confidentiality and privacy um, and trust for that transaction. 
but when you put it with sex trafficking or a shady adult service, it becomes a lot more advantageous to them. So the quote there is from a an attorney who worked with with the with issues of sex trafficking, and so it alludes to the fact that oftentimes a ad for a minor does not explicitly state that the victim is in fact a minor. They use veiled and coded language in order to get that point across. And the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children reported that a significant majority of reports for child sex trafficking can be linked back to Backpage.com. So just this past month, in March 2016, Congress held Backpage in contempt after a subpoena was issued to their CEO and he was non-compliant. And so what the contempt offer, what the contempt process does is it allows the Senate Legal Counsel to, to have the option to file a lawsuit in, into Backpage, against Backpage in order to look more closely into their process to see if they are in fact complicit in sex trafficking operations. And Backpage interestingly has stated that they would welcome the court's decision to finally figure out if they are in fact guilty of of helping with sex trafficking or not. All right, so now we're going to talk about some preventions and solutions to the sex trafficking and cybercrime problem. So data mining and um, research tools are available. Um, Memix is the primary tool that's receiving a lot of attention lately. So what this does, it's designed specifically for sex trafficking. It's a combination of the words memory and index. And so what it does is it tracks mainly the ads that are posted throughout the deep web and surface web. And what we want to do with it is um, monitor the activity levels throughout the um, actual physical world. So spatial and temporal patterns will be generated on a map. And you will often get heat signatures indicating increased activity. And this tool is also speculated to have further use for drug and firearm trafficking that's illegal, as well as non-criminal use including disaster relief and disease prevention and more. So one case example of how Memex has been used already. In 2012 there was a woman who was being held against her will and she weighed the option and decided it was best to jump out of a window after she was being held for two days. She fell 15 meters to the pavement, and then she, but she was able to survive the fall, and she was being pursued by her captors. And using utilizing Memex, the New York uh, di district attorney was able to find enough evidence to um, to sentence Benjamin Gatson to 50 years to life. All right, so with data mining, um, there's often the question about privacy, and since Memix is a data mining tool, it gets some attention, but uh, this quote kind of refers to um, the dangers of just feeling that you're innocent and that you don't have anything to hide. It's, um, there, are, um, there is a need for security when you're online. And so, again, criminals will seek to invade and exploit privacy for their own gain. And the thing about Memex is that it's not designed for this, only really for sex trafficking at this point. And this quote is actually from the creators, and it's kind of humorous in a way. It, um, it's just basically saying, reinforcing the purpose of Memex. It's not really for anything but sex trafficking. So the big takeaways that we found in our research are that sex trafficking is a pervasive issue and it's not exactly known how much of the population is being affected. There is no, there's not a lot of prevalence data that's been, uh, that's been provided. And as technology improves and becomes more integrated with our lives, the people expect for the situation to worsen. 
And so in finding solutions again, one of the most common proposed solutions is to simply take down the websites. And this um, is um, an analogy to the Hydra head approach in that if you cut off one of the heads, another will pop right back up. And we saw this in the instance of Craigslist shutting down their service and Backpage receiving all that traffic. So finally, technology can increase exploitative transactions as well as opportunities to intervene. So although this needs work um, in terms of the technology to intervene, there is hope in the end. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.